everyone. Uh, this is Palm Sunday and we are coming to you from Jersey, the Channel Islands. I am Reverend Nico Hilby Jones. And I'm Reverend Jenny and it's lovely to be here with you this morning in God's house, worshipping God's holy name. And so we're going to light a candle to begin. I'm hoping my girl guide skills don't let me down here. <laughs> I'll light and you pray. Indeed. And so let us worship as we pray. God is our strength and our salvation. Let us sing with great joy. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us be glad and rejoice, for Jesus Christ is Lord. Give thanks to God, for he is good. Let us praise the name of God, for his steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Amen. And now our first hymn, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty. sustains us. We thank you for your son Jesus Christ, who giving up all he had and walking the path of obedience, he opened the gates of justice and became our king and our salvation. We wave palm branches in anticipation and we lay our cloaks of love before him to cushion his walk. And when the gates of joy have been opened to us, we will spend moment by moment every knee in creation bending singing our praises to you, God in community, holy in one, together in faith. Loving God, we confess that we, we never praise you enough, nor serve you well enough, nor love you deeply enough. We try, yet we falter. Always we fall short, and sometimes we realise our limitations, sometimes we do not. Yet you, gracious God, Go on loving and nurturing us, not counting our faults, but multiplying your grace and mercy. So forgive us when we cling to the excuse of our unworthiness to serve you, forgetting that in Jesus you have cleansed our sin and removed our guilt. Forgive us when we 
betray the truth of the gospel through our lack of integrity and we we do not follow you with our whole hearts and so we thank you for seeing beyond our faults and our fears and empowering us to be new people and knowing that we are all your children and you are always with us we just ask that you redeem us now you lift us up again and set us free so sisters and brothers as you trust in jesus know that your sins are forgiven and be at peace and we ask all this in your holy name amen and now let us say the prayer that jesus taught us to say our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen Our Gospel lesson for this morning is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 1 to 11. And it says this. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her, and tie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfil what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, see, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Nika, for that reading. I'm going to tell you a story. And it's from a wonderful book called With an Open Eye. So, are you sitting comfortably? Well, I'll begin then. Remember the Chinese proverb, boy? The longest journey begins with the smallest step, Mr. Haggard intoned, and not for the first time either. It had been a mantra that Maynard had become all too familiar with in recent times. And right now, it didn't help one bit. Come on, boy! Mr. Haggart was shouting. Go for it! You have to try! Come on! Make an effort! You'll get nowhere if you don't have a go! <sighs> there was no use. Maynard had failed again. He just couldn't get started. And as he stood shaking on the little platform at the top of the rope slide, hanging on to the bar and peering over the edge to see what seemed a long way down to the ground, Maynard simply lost any bottle that he'd ever had before. But thankfully, nobody mocked him as he made his way down from the platform. And Mr. Haggard just sighed a very loud, resigned, that said it all. Maynard had disappointed yet again. He should never come on that adventure camp with his scout troop. Oh, he was really good at other things like knots and campfire songs. He had lots and lots of badges like 
first aid and cooking. And he could recite all the creeds about the history of scouting, and he was a great bomber job scout. But Maynard just couldn't do all that, you know, physical stuff. He was overweight, he was uncoordinated, he'd fallen off a swing when he was a kid, and that hadn't helped his confidence either. But mostly, Maynard, he was scared. And no amount of encouragement about starting with the smallest step and just go for it made the blind bit of difference. So rope slides, climbing trees, monkey bars, assault courses, all out of the question for Maynard. There were, mm, mm, the only one thing he could just kind of about manage was swimming. And it was probably partly because as his brother had told him, well, you carry so much blubber. That's why you can float your way across the North Sea. But Maynard wasn't going to try that or anything else that really required too much effort. He couldn't put his head under water, that's too scary. He always needed his feet to touch the bottom and he wouldn't swim out of his depth. Too scary. Didn't like rough and tumble in the pool, too unpredictable. He couldn't quite swim a length. Well, he probably could if he tried, but it was too risky, so why take the risk? So Maynard just swam across the pool at the shallow end, carefully avoiding all the other strong swimmers doing their 20 lengths. Uh, maybe one day he could try it, but um, Maynard, um, too scared, too scared. So the scout's life-saving bag was definitely not for him. It would have been fine if someone else had been around when Digby Matheson fell into the river. He wasn't supposed to fall into the river, of course, but because Digby was one of the best behaved and most ultra careful boys in the troop. And anyway, he'd broken his shoulder and his wrist the previous week when he'd fallen off his bike and his arm was now in plaster and it was hanging in the sling. It was touch or go whether he'd be allowed to go to the camp. But he promised to behave and Maynard said he'd be there for Digby. And Mr. Haggard and the other troop leaders had promised to look after them. So there was no problem. Once Maynard had been let off trying the top slide, and with Digby incapacitated with his sling, the two lads were dispatched off along the riverbank to collect wood for the campfire. Maynard carried the big canvas sack, and Digby held the small axe. And a sufficient quantity of suitable firewood was dutifully collected. Maynard hoisted the sack full on his back, that's what big lads are there for, isn't it? And the two pals were ambling along the campsite when suddenly a fox came shooting out of the undergrowth and the two, the two scouts were given such a fright that Maynard swung around in the direction of the fox that he had run and he clobbered his unprepared companion full on his bad shoulder with the sack of firewood and Digby screamed in pain and staggered backwards to escape the menacing Maynard and fell right off the edge of the path into the river. And within moments he was thrashing around the water, completely incapacitated by his injured arm. He tried to reach for the grass on the bank with his good hand, but he was too far away. And the more he tried, the more he failed, and the more he tried, the more he panicked, and the more he panicked, the more he thrashed about, and the more he thrashed about, the more he was taking in water. And Maynard was panicking too. Well, what should I do? What should I do? Sh should I run back for help? Oh, it's too far. I'd never make it anyway. Could he? Could I find a stick that's long enough to get Digby to catch him? No. Well, there's nothing lying around. And Maynard looked at his struggling friend and he heard a voice in his head. Come on, boy. Go for it. And in an instant, he leapt into the water. He didn't know what he was supposed to do. The water would be over his head. He'd sink without a trace. And they'd both go down together. But to Maynard's surprise, he found that he was standing upright. His feet were firmly on the riverbed and the water no more than his waist. And Digby was grabbing onto his arms, saying, Miss Amy, Miss Amy, steady on. You'll have me trousers off if you're not careful. Pretty soon the two wet scouts were struggling the two-path 
and neither were quite sure who was helping the other. What they were sure of, though, was that they had a great story to tell around the campfire that night. And when the truth came out, Mr. Haggart called Maynard out in front of all the following night and with a great ceremony presented him with a new badge, which looked surprisingly like something cut out of an old tea towel written with some felt tip on it, which proudly reminded Maynard that there might be more times like this if you just go for it. Being a Christian means that God demands difficult things from us, which sometimes we feel are completely out of our means, our capabilities, and our skills. But God never lets us down. And sometimes the challenge is difficult. Whether God calls us to jump into a river, to stand up against injustice, to speak the truth, to confront a bully, or simply to admit to being a Christian rather than being ashamed. God constantly says to us, go for it. So on Palm Sunday, when Christ entered into Jerusalem, knowing the pain and the agony that lay before him, he did not sway. He did not take an alternative. He did what was required of him obediently and humbly. And so as Christ prepared to walk the road to Calvary, there is nothing that God calls us to do which is harder than that. So whatever you face today, tomorrow, this week, next month, listen to that voice of God that says, go for it. Amen. Let's pray. Loving God, remember the troubles of this world, where there is fear and hatred, where there is terror and despair. We pray for your mercy, we pray for your peace. Lord, you taught us to pray for our enemies, so we pray for all those for whom we struggle with in this world. For whom make people, they, they make bad decisions that do not benefit many people. We pray for mercy. Lord, we pray for our own contexts. You know the intricacies of our communities, our next door neighbours, our places of work, our families and all the communities that we work in. Lord, we pray that you are in every situation. We pray for our friends and our families who feel so far away right now. When we long for the presence and comfort of a hug. May we feel your Holy Spirit's arms around us and your presence truly with us. So Lord, be with our friends and our family. Be with us in our hearts. And whatever we may face this time of Holy Week and Palm Sunday and that road to Calvary, we pray, Lord, that we will constantly feel the power of your Holy Spirit. That we will know you are with us. And we are not alone. Now, Nico, I know I'm meant to be announcing the next hymn. I have no idea what it is. <laughs> I even picked it as well. What is it? Remind me. Our next hymn is Lift High the Cross. 
I have to say, before we play it, I know that my congregation at St. Juan are all laughing right now. There's never been one <laughs> service I've not got the hymns wrong, so the good people of St. Juan, I hope you're laughing. So, what are we singing? Lift high the cross. May God keep you from harm. May Christ Jesus lead you through the gates of justice. And may the Holy Spirit fill you with joy so you may praise Christ the King. May the blessing of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Amen. <laughs>